Hey everyone, you're listening to the Active Turnkey Podcast, a podcast designed for hands-off passive real estate rental investors. In the Active Turnkey Podcast, you'll hear Tom Olson and Jared Stoltmeister discuss all things turnkey rentals with other turnkey providers, service providers, and rental investors. Our goal is to help you reach your financial freedom and whatever comes after that. Let's go. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Active Turkey Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Stoltmeister. Welcome back. Hi, how you oh, wait, doing? I'm the one that's being yeah, welcome back because I wasn't here last that's month, right. last week. We yeah. have the Tom Olson. Yes, this in, time. In the flesh, in I'm person. Here. I get to be here with everybody. That's right. So we can uh, get back to the nitty gritty, the, the the flow we typically have when we have both of us in yeah. in the uh, in the studio. Podcast studio. This yeah. is, uh, if you've been to our office, you guys know how elaborate it is in our studio. It's nice, man. This is this it's slick. Like, yeah. Uh, with the, uh, we already talked about the red and blue light. We don't know the new terminology for the... I, I learned some new terminology on vacation, hmm. but I, I've already forgotten what it was because it was so bad. Yeah. I didn't understand it. You got to be really careful, too, using... Yeah. Some using the new, the new terminology because if... Yeah, there's some words that meant yeah. different things when we were kids. Yeah. You got to be you got to be pretty careful. <laughs> and... Uh, I'm and they sorry, can folks, we're you. already off topic. I think it's spot like, you trying to have to. Yes. Yeah, they really oh, can. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, My daughter fair. told me, so there was a text group that we created on our vacation for everybody. It was like 10 of us or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, and my, my daughter's like, just put this word in there. And I'm like, okay. So yeah. I put the word in there. I think there was just... Uh laughing going on in the other side that of should that. have been a dead From, giveaway yeah she i think was, they were trying to set me up too. yeah big time i think so kids so how was your spring break jared uh it was great we had a staycation and uh and so uh it was great we stayed home and played games and but we did have kind of a you major some, storm you had some events that happened we did we had uh uh a tornado went through Maryville and Hobart. Mm-hmm. Uh, the tornado didn't hit us, but the winds did, and we lost our power for two days. And we realized quickly how dependent we were, not on power, but more specifically... Technology? On internet. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah tech. And, and so uh, the kids were like on vacation thinking, what am I going to do with this free time I have if I can't be on gaming? Let or, me guess, Jared. They all went outside and played outside in the yard. Yeah. No, they didn't. No. Uh, well, at night, since we didn't have power, and I don't, I'm not like in the book, uh, what is it, the uh, great, was it the salesman, ultimate sales machine? Okay. Isn't it that one where he talks about, no, it's 10x rule, right? Where he talks okay. about getting a generator? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so Jared 10X. doesn't want to take responsibility for Correct. losing power. Yeah. No, he's yeah. not there yet. No, I'm not that guy. Uh, I mean, we've <laughs> lost power one time in five years, so I didn't feel That's like true. it's worth the investment. True. But That's true. now that it was there, now you're it like, was, hmm, maybe I need a generator. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. So anyway, uh, it was interesting. We were reading books by candlelight. Ooh. <laughs> Sounds uh, romantic, Jared. Was oh, it, it was, romantic novels? It was. I was reading. A, I read a novel. I read one a year. <laughs> it was. It's good. Okay. It was okay. Fun. Okay. Yeah, a Christian novel. We but, got to. Uh, how about I, you? I actually read the book Whisper, Christian novel, or mm. Christian book, not novel. Mm. And then I also, um, we read, um, I shouldn't say we, we read, we listened to in the car. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, the Traveler. If you have never read that mm. book, I really, I highly recommend it. It's a really good book. But you so, guys drove to... Orlando. Orlando yes. from yes. And normally Indiana. we don't drive, normally we fly, but it was like $7,000 for the plane tickets that the I was going to have to take. And yeah. I'm like, okay, guys, at some point... Something's got to give. It's just... I'll just drive for two days. So yeah. that's what we end up doing. So we had a good time. Um, but sorry, back to the Active Turnkey <laughs> podcast. I know you guys want to hear about us. Yeah. Some people like like it. I've heard some comments that We're they real. like to hear. We're about, real people. You know, the real life of yeah. Jared's dot meister. Yeah, what does my day look like? Yeah, exactly. People <laughs> ask me that all the time. I'm like, why do you want to know about my day? It's really yeah. not that good of a sure. day. It's just a day. You know, like I wake up and I, you know, go to the bathroom and then I eat my breakfast and I brush my teeth and I go to work. I Tom mean, puts his pants know? on the same, same way, way everybody do. else One does. Leg at you time. got it. It's All true. right. So we are going to, we're talking, we are, we are in this active turnkey series yeah. Yeah. inside yeah. the oh, yeah. active turnkey podcast that we talk about our properties here in Gary, Indiana. Yeah. That's right. Yes. So, right. um, and we just had an investor come in mm-hmm. and some of our future podcasts you're going to see here in a couple of weeks. Um, we're gonna we're gonna take some clips from a podcast that we did from what, what's the guy's name? His name is well, his podcast is a uh, Millennial Mike. Millennial yeah. Mike. Yeah. And uh, we're we're just gonna give you a little teaser there, but just go check out some of his cool. He has some some cool. Oh, he does. Um, stuff. He's got a lot of followers. 
Um, he gave us some tips too. So you, you might implement some of those tips here. We're probably going to show some of the podcasts that we did with him yeah. um, and some short clips in the future. So be on the lookout for that. Also, if this brings you value, don't forget to give us a five-star rating. We haven't gotten any of those in a while. We I, I don't know if we just need to up our game. Oh, yeah. Or if well. we just need to mention it more, guys. So give us some five-star reviews. If you've already given us one, give us another one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, we did it at the beginning. We never do it at the beginning. That's so true. Maybe people so, just aren't. Yeah. Maybe you're just turning it off. Like, you... press that like button, <laughs> subscribe, follow. And really, like, what helps us more than anything else is just telling your friends and family about yeah. us. And... Um, <clears throat> We would love to be able to help you reach financial freedom, whatever that yeah. means for you. So, Active Turnkey, we're in the Active yeah. Turnkey uh, um, series mm -hmm. inside the Active Turnkey podcast. I know it's a little bit, uh, you know, Active Turnkey-ish. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of that. But, uh, Jared, what are we going to talk about today? So, we the first several episodes in this series, we were talking about more like the desk assessment. Mm -hmm. When you're, you, you get a deal that comes your way, however it is, you should be establishing a few things. We talked about establishing ARV, rent, uh, estimating repairs, stuff like that, um, creating your performa, finding out what the numbers look like. Because uh, even with our team, I was discussing with Brian, my son, who works on our team, our acquisitions team. Uh, we were talking about he was going to go out to LaPorte one day. And I asked him, hey, did you did you go through the numbers? Uh, did you run through a performa? The mm -hmm. last thing you want to do is go take, a, for us, 45 minutes to an hour drive, depending on where you're starting from, to a, to an area when the, the, the deal never made sense on paper to begin with. Right. So, And I'm thinking is, if I'm an investor out of state, you know, oh, like, yeah. am I going to go you know, get in an airplane before I've even seen if the numbers are going to work, no, right? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely not. Yeah, so, yeah. But now we're going to talk more about like what kind of what we do, right? right not right. maybe what an investor would do, but what we do for mm -hmm. the investor. Mm -hmm. And if you're an investor, mm -hmm. you if do you're it. doing this in your local market, yep. if you're doing Burr in your local market, or if you're doing, um, you know, buying rentals in your own local market, these are some things mm -hmm. and some that we've learned. Yeah. Honestly, partly sometimes the hard way. When sure. I first started investing, mm -hmm. I did not realize what this particular point, mm -hmm. how important this particular point was. Yeah. You know, I would just look at um, mm -hmm. the comps mm -hmm. and I would just look at pictures and I would just look at bed bath count and sure. just look at square footage. Square feet, and yeah. I didn't really pay attention to how important the layout, the layout there it is. is and that's what we're going to talk about today. The yeah. layout of yeah. the property is when it comes to um, a rental. And mm -hmm. you, you would think, oh, it doesn't really matter and it yes. might not matter quite as much for rental as it does for retail, but I'm going to tell you it does matter, and mm -hmm. it does matter on the, in your in your in the big picture of what your overall return is going to be. Because like I like I've said before, I am not looking at you guys buying turnkeys and owning them for 20, 30, 40, 50 sure. years. That's not our program. That's not what I do myself personally, and it's not really what I recommend my investors do. We do really recommend that you. Um, look at potentially selling or refinancing these properties in you know mm -hmm. seven, six, seven, eight years um, when market's gone up, when things have changed and maybe interest rates are low. <laughs> um, you know that's the time to kind of either sell or refinance. Um, so this is, I think, a very important yeah. piece that we're going to talk about today. Yeah, uh, last week we discussed curb appeal. Uh, what does a house look like when you're pulling up? Uh, we we discussed. You know, even driving to the property, depending on the route you take, your and perspective, the tenant, itself. yeah, yep. all that, that's outside. We didn't necessarily get into the layout of the property on the lot, which we we, we kind of broached a little bit. Um, you know, if you have to walk in this, the front door, which is on the side of the lot, you know, that's kind of a strange layout. If you if your property is going long ways on a on a you know a rectangle type light type lot, but in this case, we're talking more about the inside of the property for the most part. Uh, and the, more or less the podcast title is how important is the layout? Absolutely. So and, yeah. I would say it's very important and I think it's been important <clears throat> on the outside and the inside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, the biggest, you know, the biggest things I would want to look for on the outside of the lot is does it look, it's, just, it's the same thing with the inside of the house, mm -hmm. but does it look normal? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> is it normal for that street? Is like, is your is your house different than every other street in every other you know streets? Mm -hmm. Kind of cookie cutter, and yours is like completely different. Yeah. Now maybe it's completely different and it's better. Maybe sure. it's got a circle drive, and mm -hmm. maybe it's like really nice. Gated. Um, yeah, maybe it's <laughs> exactly. It could be. Wow. Um, sure. But like, that's probably not typically the case <laughs> when no. we're when we're talking about this. Um, so yes, it's possible that there are some things that can maybe bring up. The value mm -hmm. or bring up the the um and, and we're saying you said curb appeal last time right. this is kind of goes into curb appeal it, it does on 
the outside layout, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but also like think of things like yard mm-hmm. and think of things like parking. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, um, the other thing that I've run into several times, and I, this this hurts way more than I realize. I've I've gotten into these deals probably two or three times in my career where there's a shared driveway Mm -hmm. and shared driveways can really be a negative. Is it, is it always like a completely X out? No, but it's kind of a hit against you. It's probably something that, you know, you do need to think, Oh, maybe instead of this renting for 1300, it might only rent for 1250. It might only rent for 1200. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe instead of this retail being 160, 180, maybe it's only 140, 150. Like you, it is going to hurt you on things like shared driveway. Um, so, you know, on the outside of the house, Jared, what else would you would you think about? Like driveway, I think is important. Yeah, yeah. You know, even like, I know this isn't exactly this, but like garage, if it has mm-hmm. a garage, it doesn't mm-hmm. have a garage, that kind of goes into layout yeah, a little bit. it does. Um, but parking, I think is important. Is mm-hmm. there street parking only? Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of houses only have street parking. And right. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, right. but it is something to, to, to take in consideration, especially when you're comparing against other comparables yeah. in, in, in the neighborhood. So kind of like Jared said, is the house turned a little bit yeah. like is it just not normal right um or does it look like every other house does it look like you pull up and as you would you know pull up it would be great another mm-hmm. thing in layout i would even mention and i'm not sure if you have this in another section mm-hmm. that we might talk about is is yard backyard some people like big backyards yeah. some people don't like big backyards right um but does it have a yard at all yeah you know and now in big cities you're probably not going to have a yard in sure. chicago and some you know cleveland like mm-hmm. like um, you know, we're, we're looking at a house right now and kind of one of the things that turned me off, it's a five unit. All right. Mm-hmm. And it only has three parking spaces <laughs> plus it has street parking. And I'm like, Ooh, man. And there was actually room to add more units to this building. Cause it already had like some extra space at this building. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, man, how am I going to, how am I, mm-hmm. how do I justify that right. to potential renters? Like it's right. all I see is this is going to be a nightmare. People fighting are going to be fighting and, mm-hmm. Um, so, so what are some other things, Jared, on the outside of the building, yeah. the inside, but on the outside of the building and the layout of the outside of the, of the land and the mm-hmm. property, what else would you think about? We had, uh, some properties where maybe you're on a busy street and there is oh, no sure. street parking. Oh, yeah. And the only way to get to the parking is through the alley. Mm-hmm. You know, that could be a pain depending on the alley and, and the, and the area, maybe mm-hmm. the alley is not kept and, and, uh, or you, you, you have a garage, but the access to the garage is through the alley. You know, that is something to think about, um, that, that could come up. Um, and people used to like that. That actually oh, used to yeah. be a bonus. Oh, big deal. That yeah. people used. To, so it is kind of hit and miss. Sometimes people might mm-hmm. still think it's a bonus and they might mm-hmm. like that that way. But um, so anything else? Yeah, no, Yard, I think I think you layout. hit you hit a lot of that. Um, like I said, the 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 especially with a lot of these um, uh, manufactured homes, wherever you see them, they're mm-hmm. they're on a rectangle lot. They're the rectangle. They're, so you walk in the side door uh, is in the middle of the house. And it's facing the side of somebody else's house. and Or we did mention last podcast, Tom, but you have a corner lot. And t- a lot of times the corner lot, there is like no backyard to be because of how, how be. the, the, the lot is situated. Uh, they may have a decent sized front yard. But these and are all they, things that people think about. Because here's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing. These people, w- tenants are not different than home buyers. They're envisioning what their life's going to be like living there. Mm-hmm. And they're going to think about just the same thing that a home buyer does. Where am I going to have my grill? Where are my kids going to be? Is there, is there, a, is there a fence? Uh, am I going to have my dog running around? All these, all these different things uh, on a busy street is, is, is am I going to have an issue with my kids? You know, mm-hmm. All these are concerns that they're going to be paying attention to. Oh, and they're real, point, just like yeah. a home buyer. And it, it is interesting because it's funny because you go back 30, 40, 50 years ago and be on the corner lot, that was actually a big deal. Yeah. People yeah. would pay more mm-hmm. to have that corner lot. But now yeah. as cars drive faster and as we like, you know, people whip down those busier streets, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, it can, you know, at some point become a negative, especially if the yard maybe isn't fenced in. Sure. You know, that's something we didn't mention, but like a fenced in yard mm-hmm. can mm-hmm. obviously help, mm-hmm. you know, those, those situations. We actually have a property right now where we're selling it retail and the, the buyers wanted to be able to put a fence. It was a contingency. <laughs> it was a contingency. Like they, they won't buy the house if get, they couldn't if put the a fence If the city wouldn't let them put a fence there. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so think about that with dogs or with, with mm-hmm. small children. Um, all those things really do help. Like if you've got a fenced in yard, it mm-hmm. really is going to help. Most people have fenced. Um, that rentability. Yeah. It's going to help, you know, um, that, 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 that curb appeal, but also help that outside. Those are the things that I would be looking at. Um, honestly, for me, I don't think it's a big deterrent. Jared talked about the manufactured home sideways. Like, I don't know, like 
to me, that's probably not as big of a deal mm-hmm. as maybe a shared driveway. Oh, I agree. Um, I agree with that. You know, sure. so you know, so it, but but it def, definitely does kind of it is different. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like if you're out in the country, most of those manufactured homes are kind of like sitting straight, mm-hmm. you know, towards the mm-hmm. house. Mm-hmm. Um, but those are all things that I think about. I guess the one more last thing that I would that would kind of that kind of come to mind when we talk about outside layout um, is uh, is like. Does the is it is is it a low spot? <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, like is there going to be potential flooding sure. here? Obviously, flood zones it's, it's whole thing, but there are mm-hmm. some houses that are not in flood zones at all. Right, but they're still kind of low mm-hmm. and they get soggy a lot. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of especially you know, certain areas of the country, and we're in one of those areas where like get a low spot and yeah. you're you're kind of you know your front yard is a uh, is a lake. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm dealing with that issue right now with one of our homes that Brian and I are doing I gotcha. partnering on. So. Uh, the uh, we're gonna have to get somebody out there to actually dig out the front area and lower it because we're the lowest spot. So all the water, mm-hmm. the rain, uh, be, it comes off at the parking and the sidewalk and just collects in, in, our, in our front yeah, yard. Yeah. So like sometimes so, building a ditch in the front of the yard or on the yeah. side of your like sometimes you yeah. got to do some extra you know drainage Excavating things. Or yeah. Um, when it comes to that, and then the last thing that I would kind of mention is grade. So the grade of the home, I think, and mm-hmm. this isn't not necessarily on value, sure, um, or rentability, or how much you're going to get, but the grade really does kind of matter when you're renting because sure. it goes into how much money it's going to cost you down the road. You don't want a house that's kind of graded towards oh, yeah. the house. You don't want that land to be graded towards the house. You want that land to kind of be graded away from the house, mm-hmm. and um, especially. Especially as a basement, we have yeah. a lot of basements in this yeah. area. Yeah. Um, the slab homes in Florida don't, you know, mm-hmm. that, that doesn't maybe affect them as quite as much, although it mm-hmm. can. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, definitely, yeah. grading is something that I'd be thinking about when it comes to this as well. So let's jump into the inside of the yep. house, Jerry. Yep. Yeah, no, I mean, now this is definitely, and, and, and what comes to mind for me is, you know, we we work in a lot of different areas, and different uh, areas are different. So you go out to a place like Laporte. I think of a place like Laporte where a lot of old you know, 1900 builds, you know, old houses and they're small. I mean, these houses are like, you know, two bad houses Mm -hmm. and what people inevitably added on. Mm -hmm. And, and so when they do the add on it automatically, it's choppy. It's choppy. Like, cause it's not like the normal flow of the build. And so when you see the different add ons in different ways, if it's not, if it's done kind of hokey mm-hmm. uh it's automatically going to affect flow so what it you're just saying is seem... throughout the last hundred years um everybody when they've remodeled their home hasn't hired a professional oh whoa yeah. um i guess maybe i did step designer out. and uh <laughs> like to redesign the no. whole flow of the no. house no Jared? they didn't because they were designers oh, these okay. people they knew what they were doing. i mean hgtv has probably helped a lot oh, of sure. uh, homeowners yeah. figure this out on their own a little bit they probably and helped the diyers yeah, out yeah, there yeah, yeah. Uh, do it yourself yeah. um types of um no yeah. they've helped a little bit they've but helped yes sometimes so, you could say it you know but jared's 100 percent right like this is one thing probably the biggest thing that i've seen over the years on the reason why because very rarely is a house actually built with a bad layout. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's normally the fact that somebody's made a change to the mm-hmm. house or mm-hmm. added on. And now mm-hmm. like this three, one is like, it really originally was a two, one. Mm-hmm. And now they've added a living room in the back and they've made the, the living room that was in the front of bedroom. And mm-hmm. it just, the whole house is choppy. That yeah. ch- choppy is a great word. Um, things are small. Nowadays, most people want an open mm-hmm. concept. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I've seen old houses that aren't that way, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the house that, that me and my wife live in has had additions, but really it was very well planned out, mm-hmm. very mm-hmm. appropriate. And mm-hmm. even when we went in there, we made some additional changes to open up some things and to mm-hmm. kind of make it even a little bit more open and a little bit better. Um, but 100% right. So additions, choppiness. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some other things that you maybe think about when you walk into a, into a house, Jerry? What, what, what are some things that you might want to avoid or might want to maybe not even avoid as much as lower your expectations? Well, so as an investor, one thing I want to know is like if this is a two bed, I'm automatically paying attention to above grade square feet. So if we're bidding on properties, we see this house has got 1,100 square feet, but it's got two bedrooms above grade. I'm like, okay, there's room somewhere for a third bedroom here. Mm-hmm. But where are you putting it? Because as you add it, as you put up a wall, that could affect 
the layout. It could affect mm -hmm. the flow. And so while you're getting a third grade, and here's the thing for the investor, the investor knows uh, by adding a bedroom above grade, I'm gonna increase, increase my rent, I'm gonna increase my value. So that's mm -hmm. great. But well, really, let me let me step here, stop here, because mm -hmm. adding a bedroom anywhere oh, yeah. is going to increase those sure, sure. but it's gonna add more if it's above grade, above especially grade. on the, the, the retail price of the property. Now right. rents, you know, like if you have rent if you have bedrooms in the basement, true it helps. Mm -hmm. And if it's done nice, mm -hmm. it can like help a lot. If oh, it's yeah. not done quite nice or there's not really a great way mm -hmm. to make that mm -hmm. You know, turn into the basement, feel more like part of the home. Right. Yeah. Um, it may not help as much, mm -hmm. but you know, you definitely want above grade versus below grade yeah. affects value, value of rent, affects value on the back end when you sell as well. Yeah, yeah. So, so, and, and so again, I think it, I think it's great. I, I I've done that on several of our properties where we saw. In fact, we, the, the house I was mentioning that had the water collecting, uh, they had a third bedroom in there, and they actually took it out to make a huge living room. Well, I just decided to put it right back, which was basically what the bill was before. So mm -hmm. it was okay. Yeah. Um, but in that situ, but in a different situation, if you add that wall, you make the third bedroom great. Now you have a three bed. But the flow can be affected, and it may look odd, like oh, this is now this living room small, or you know, there's different. Why ways is to there look a at bedroom it. in my living room? Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, everyone's you have plans, but but here's the thing, and I think what it is, I think investors, it's creative, but the flow part can affect your days on market. It can affect the desire because people do walk in and they're like, okay, this doesn't. It's, it just doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. And that's the flow part. It's the choppiness. Yeah, I mean, I've also noticed things that are really just weird. Like I've walked into a front door and I'm in the kitchen. And I'm thinking to myself, how in the world? <laughs> like what yeah. happened here? Yeah. They obviously didn't build it this way, more sure. than likely. Mm -hmm. um, but like, I mean, so things like that, yeah. like really are kind of weird. And you yeah. kind of have to look, you know, be, be, be looking out for those. Um, uh, Jared mentioned, has mentioned the flow many times. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, yeah. the way I look at it is, does it feel normal? Yeah. You know, like a, a three, one, that's just like you walk in, you go down the hallway, there's three bedrooms in the hallway, there's a bathroom in the yep. hallway, you go around the corner, there's a kitchen and you have the living room. Okay. That's very natural. simple, yep. natural. It may not be big. Mm -hmm. It may not be fancy, but it's still normal. Mm -hmm. It feels normal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, I get, I, I think that's, that's the, that's a big thing. I think also small kitchens can be, mm -hmm. can be, um, Honestly, they're not that bad of a of a thing for rentals, especially no, because no, you don't no. really want to put a lot of money into sure. those kitchens. But at the end of the day, like also people have to have a place to to eat. Mm -hmm. If not, they're eating all over the house. Um, so, and a lot of the rentals don't have great massive dining rooms. Mm -hmm. You know, they mm -hmm. um, so kind of that that the, actually believe it does help. So either you have a an island or some kind of a peninsula that yeah. has a eating area, sure. or you've got a little area at least that can fit. You know, a good four person table or mm -hmm. something that. That kind of helps that whole thing. Mm -hmm. Dining rooms do help. Um, I don't think it's as important as no. having maybe an extra bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing I would mention is the second bathroom. Uh, so second bathrooms uh, definitely raise the desirability mm -hmm. of everything. So sure. um, e at least even a half bath. So mm -hmm. a one and a half is way more desirable than just a one bath. Mm -hmm. It's not something that I completely... I, I don't have a hard, fast rule, and I have a no. lot of two ones, a lot of three mm -hmm, ones. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will say, you know, one of those things that I don't like to see is a four one. Sure. I really don't like four bedrooms and one bathroom. I know some people would say, I don't even want a three one, but um, mm -hmm. uh, I, three ones are very normal yeah. in most rental type, type type neighborhoods in all parts of the country. It's yeah. not just in our part of the country. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe in an area or a city that has all new builds, all houses sure. that have been built in the last 30, 40 years, mm -hmm. you might see mm -hmm. all two bedrooms. But for the most part, most neighborhoods have yeah, a lot of three ones yeah, in, yeah. in those things. But I will tell you, a two bedroom, two bathroom, I mean, it's going to give you a lot, going to give you that extra $7,500 a month for rent. It's going to give you an extra fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 maybe on, on the back end as far as um, that is concerned. Um, what are some other things, Jared, on the inside? I guess the other thing I, could, I would say is if you're going upstairs, maybe um, low ceilings could yeah. be a layout issue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also low ceilings in basements, especially mm -hmm. if the basements are finished. Now, if the basements are just kind of like cellars or they're just like sure. not really finished space, um, it doesn't matter as much. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's any kind of a chance for it yeah. to be livable, living somehow, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, and even I've even seen um, houses where like going down the stairs, you have to duck to kind of go down a stair and mm -hmm. that can be a deterrent as well. Again, sure. none of these things 
I say, okay, if it yeah. has one of these things, I'm going to completely X these things off. Right. But I will tell you, it does affect the value. It sure. does affect the rentability. It mm-hmm. affects the price. It affects how much money you get. Right. So just as long as the numbers work, I, I never want to kind of discourage anybody to say, well, if it has any of these items right. we're talking about for layout, we're not going to buy. But if it has all of them, mm-hmm. <laughs> if it has five of them, um, you know, you really got to lower that expectation. Yeah. I've made a, it's funny cause I've, I've always, I've heard this, this statement many times. And when I was younger, I didn't understand it as much as I do now, but you know, I've heard, do, do I want pretty houses or do I want to make money? Like mm-hmm. that's the question you kind of have to ask yourself. So we're not sure. even necessarily talking about aesthetics at this yeah. point. Yeah. We're really just talking about layout. I, cause I think that layout is probably more important. Aesthetics are important. Don't get me wrong. We're probably going to get to that if we haven't already. Um, but aesthetics are definitely very, very important. We mm-hmm. believe very highly in the aesthetics of the house. But layout, I think, is one of those things you can't change. I can yeah. change aesthetics in a property. Some of the times layouts you can change, mm-hmm. <laughs> like mm-hmm. we've talked about, mm-hmm. and some of the times you can't. Well, I, I think uh, going back to the three-bedroom, two-bath option compared to one, I think any renter, if all things were equal, they would take the second bath mm-hmm. house every time. Well, uh, what but- would you rather see? Like, Would you rather see a 4-1 or a 3-2? Uh, me personally, yeah, I'd probably, I would probably see, see a three, three two. two. It's three two. <laughs> now you're probably going to pay a little bit more for it. Um, mm-hmm. The value is going to be higher. You're going to pay for it. I don't know how significantly how much more rent you're going to get for that house, uh, but your days on market probably rent should faster. be low. Right, right, right. Yeah. So a three two is going to rent way faster than a four one at the yeah. exact same price. Right. So I, I don't think I mean, the other thing is because so I, I have had investors who they really prefer to have two bedrooms. Again, it goes back to what two the bills. Sorry, sorry, two bathrooms. Forgive me. Uh, it, it depends on the build. If you have a three one, that's a nine hundred and eighty square feet. People are going to expect it to have a three mm-hmm. one sure. bath. I mean, but you're right. A four bedroom house, they could say, okay, well, I'm surprised they don't have a half bath, quarter bath, mm-hmm. whatever that is. Um, but but those those are those are obsolescences. And so that's the other thing you really want to pay attention to. Is and some of the classic ones are: Do you have to walk into the second bedroom to get to the third? Good, good and, yeah. and even re- recently, uh, appraisers they will knock that down. In fact, I, we've had some where they'll let it go, and others where they won't even allow it to be considered a third bedroom, uh, as far as on the appraisal side. So it really depends on the appraisal. That's something you want to pay attention to. Another thing that's not a bedroom quite, going into a bedroom. A bedroom going into you. a bedroom, correct. Um, and uh, the other thing is. Um, if you have a basement and you're you're finishing a space, if you have a, a, a an area that is going from a an unfinished to a finished, and that might seem a little odd if you're walking down the stairs mm-hmm. um, and you have you're walking from that unfinished space with just the cement floors, you can paint them whatever, but then you have to go to that to get to a bathroom or to a bedroom. It's one thing for potential because we do have houses like that we've sold for to investors that have a bathroom that's already been down there, no sense in eliminating it's in good shape. Let's keep it. Um, but to, to create bedrooms and things like that and not have you walk into a finished area, that mm-hmm. seems kind of Absolutely. odd. But I, I think when it comes to the basement, it's not as big of a deal as when you walk into the open floor of the upstairs. I feel like that's where the flow needs to make sense. And um, because really in the basement, that's just added square feet. Uh, so it's more like a bonus type situation. Yeah, but you do get value for it. You do. So you, you definitely do. get value for it. You get price per square foot on mm-hmm, it. So mm-hmm. that all those things help. So mm-hmm. this has been a good podcast. Hopefully this has been valuable to you. You'll give us a five-star review like we talked about. Keep in mind, we do have the real estate free-for-all event coming up in September. You guys can go to goodsuccess.com to find out more information about that. We also have free calls every single month. Um, we've and, and what's going on in real estate. If that interests you, I'd love to have you guys on those calls. You guys can find out all the information on, at goodsuccess.com. Um, and if people are looking to maybe, maybe they're saying, hey, you guys yeah. seem to be know what you guys are doing, Jared, mm-hmm. a little bit. Um, we have sold about a thousand turnkeys in our in our career. A couple. Um, we do manage quite a bit. Um, and um, we'd love to help you build your rental portfolio. Um, I think we might have one or two available right now. Mm-hmm. Um, these things come and go. They, they, they do rent pretty fast, even in, a, in, a, in an economy where we have felt like, you know, we don't really know if that's going to be the case. But honestly, we have a lot more buyers. We've got properties. Um, and if you want to get on that buyers list, you just go to the one group 
com, right? One, one group. The network. one group network. Sorry, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, one group. The, is it the one group? No, I it's think just, it's just one group one network. Group so one group network. Mm-hmm. Dot com, mm-hmm. and you can also get on our buyers list right there and yep. find out more information about that. Or you could email Jared at. You could reach me at. You could still reach me at Jared at buyalsogroup.com, or you could reach me at Jared at buy one group dot com. Yes, there you go. Uh, as well, and, and you're going to buy, right? You that's can keep that's buying. right. That's, that's right. why we got that in there. Well, when you get on our buyers list, you'll receive information. But as you go on, you'll also be able to schedule a call with me. We can you can introduce ourselves to each other and find out what our goals are, and, and if we're able to help you and get a little mm-hmm. bit more information that way, um, that's another way you can uh, get a hold of us. Awesome. Well, I think that does it for today's episode, mm-hmm. Jared. Mm-hmm. What do you think? I think. I think. I think. You think? You think we think? think we, I think we, we hammered the layout enough. <laughs> I think so. I, okay. And I, these things have been things we've reviewed before, um, but we're, we're we are trying to let people know this is what we do. And if you're trying to focus on this and, and do this on your own, this is some steps you can take. And of course, there's more to do there. But but uh, we hope this brought you value. Active Turnkey, the best way to buy rentals. God bless. Olson Group Network makes no warranty, guarantee, or representation as to the accuracy or sufficiency of the information featured in this podcast. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in this podcast are for general information only, and any reliance on the information provided in this podcast is done at your own risk. This podcast should not be considered professional advice. Unless specifically stated otherwise, Olson Group Network does not endorse, approve, recommend, or certify any information, product, process, service, or organization presented or mentioned in this podcast, and information from this podcast should not be referenced in any way to imply such approval or endorsement. Any third-party materials or content of any third-party site referenced in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the opinions, standards, or policies of Olson Group Network. Olson Group Network assumes no responsibility or liability for the accuracy or completeness of the content contained in third-party materials or on third-party sites referenced in this podcast or the compliance with the applicable laws of such materials and or links referenced herein.